This game right here ends in 12 minutes and 35 seconds. It is a game in Grandmaster at around 60 LP. I am 80 LP now, somewhere there. And I basically carry the entirety of the game by the fact that I managed to turn around their invade and because they tilted out so fast and they gave up and some of them AFK'd because of that. That's the thing and also because I positioned myself after I got fed early, I got 3 kills from an invade and I managed to carry the game from that point, not ever allowing the enemy team to actually get the showdown on me, so we just snowballed heavily and this is the story of that game. It's very short compared to other games, we're going to talk about runes and builds also, but for the first thing that you need to know, every time you're against the Blitzcrank, the unwritten rule is that they are about to invade. So as you can see here, I'm going toward and pinging towards Lulu as well. I'm going toward deep, as you can see I'm warding there, because I know Blitzcrank is coming, I'm 100% sure. And again, this is Grandmaster by the way, also small break. Um, for runes, as you can see here, oh let me move the chat. Because it's right. For runes for this game, I played with Electrocute, Chip Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Rev Presence of Mind, Cup, Degrace, and these runes. Has, but Dark Harvest would have been much more better in this context because I, I end the game like E80 something, and in 12 minutes, that's a lot. And that, har that would have been a lot of Dark Harvest stacks. Also, for the build, I don't even think it's necessary to tell the general build because I don't really recall. I think I recall once or twice. I get GLP at the first recall. If you think about that, <laughs> so I go for GLP, Sorkshu's Orb, uh, Rabadon's Zonias, that's a general build, but in this video it's not that much accountable, the build doesn't matter that much because I don't have time to pick stuff. So, I start with the word there, and I position myself back, my team pings to go to this bush on the left, and we all go there, Lulu positions herself better there bottom, so that she can actually use Q on everyone, and you're going to notice that Rengar gets instantly demolished, and Warwick barely escapes. And this looks like a loss, right? It's funny, it's very funny that this looks like a loss. But Lulu positioned herself perfectly and gave me the setup to actually take three kills from this. So uh, I don't have I don't have the first kill, uh, it's on Warwick. But I, I position myself as such to use Q and to go towards them and they try to help their team, right? But you're against a Talia and you're against a champion that at level one has a very annoying Q, much as Cyan, but a spammable spell every 8 seconds, that's quite quite powerful for them, so I get a double kill here. And Blitzcrank now here does a trollish thing, he tries to help Xayah by going back in. And this is the point where Blitzcrank doing this actually secures me getting a huge advantage. I have already, I'm 3-0, right? The gold difference is 1000, most of the gold it's on me. And you also try to get this uh, blue buff here, but we fail because we don't do it in time. And Wukong comes here and smites it, so that's good for him, right? And we failed that. We tried to get it, but he smited, so he actually escapes. So, I'm going back to mid, and pay attention. I want you to pay attention how I play this with the advantage that I got. Right? I start to push the lane. I'm putting it on fast forward so that we don't waste time randomly. I start to push it. I make level 2. After level 2, I go out of the vision. Diana doesn't even ping mid lane. I go straight to the bush where I suspect Wukong will come. Because he did not go from blue to red instantly. I ping Warwick. Instant E, instant Q, ignite, he's dead. So I 4-0 now. I go back to lane. And I continue to do my thing. Right? So we come back here. We come back here. We are pushing this. We are permanently on top of Diana. Because with disadvantage, we know we can be very annoying. I hit a combo there. We keep poking. I have the blue buff. I have infinite spamming on her. And now she tries to engage on me. Uh, which she did, the, the trade she did was pretty fine, but here if I would have hit my combo, she would have lost the entire trade and would, she would have been actually forced to recall. So, we continue this lane, it, it doesn't look like, any, like anything special, right? Just just a 4-0 to Leah in 4 minutes. But, from this point, we actually try to snowball it very, very heavily, right? Uh, we actually pretend the recall here, we go around, we try to stick on the lane. So as I remember correct, if I remember correctly, the first recall will get me GLP. But I position myself, I'm gonna pause here, I position myself to the other side of the lane, a thing that um, generally makes the mid laner, the enemy mid laner, if he wants to reach farm, makes the enemy mid laner go to the other side. So I position to the bottom, he goes to the top, right? Right into the Warwick because she didn't ward. And this is actually quite sad for her, because now we got the kill on her, Xayah winning bot, Xayah will finish the game 8-1 by the way, she will almost be the only one to 
try to save the game. But <laughs> because their other teammates gave up, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see Xayas is 2 1. So I, we kill we kill Diana. Warwick, I ping Warwick to gank Diana, right? And I position myself for him to set up the gank, right? So it wasn't just like that. It was it was some sort of pings that actually tried to make the intention clear. I tried to tell him, well, dude, come here. She's behind. I am powerful right now. We can actually win any two versus two if Fukong comes. So yeah, stuff like that. Now she jumps on me. I, I move back and Warwick comes again. And at this point, if I hit W, she's dead. And this is exactly what's happening. Unless she flashes out. I forgot that we don't, I forgot that we did not kill her there. But this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter because she's behind now. And we're going to do just this right now. Wait a second. We, we got the kill here. It doesn't matter that Warwick actually died. It does not at all. Even though she got a shot down, she is... As you can see... Only, she's only having 15 CS, I have 30, I am 5-0, I got gold here, even though she got the shutdown on Warwick, uh, shutdown by the way, at 2 kills, it's okay. And as you can see, I'm recalling here, I'm going back, and I am getting GLP as a first item at minute 6. When this happens, you're pretty much guaranteed to have an advantage over the opponent, it doesn't take a genius. But... I push the lane, and then what I notice on the other side of the map is that they killed Seth, and then he teleported back here, Rengar is level 6, and they chase the Wukong, right? So let's just back off a bit so that we don't lose the fight. So what's happening is that they just killed Seth by a gang. Warwick spots here Wukong on the world. A bit of spectator bug right there. And because Warwick is so far ahead, he's actually doing this to him. And then they use this trinket right here. Which is good, this trinket, sorry, this uh, orb, this uh, plant, <laughs> that's the word. Now, Rengar is level 6. Rengar is level 6, he has ult. I am level 6, I have GLP, I'm mean, coming. This is the disaster for them, and no, I'm not I'm not cosplaying the boss here, but I really like that expression. So, I'm coming towards them, as you can see here how it's happening. Wukong instantly flashes, got the kill, and now... <laughs> and now Seth is trapped here without flash, and <laughs> Diana is... Well, Diana is dead. So, this is just like killing killing a trapped person somewhere, it's just sad because he has absolutely no way of doing anything. Basically, I think he gave up, they gave up at this point. It's minute 6, the score is 15-5, by the way. So, we're gonna sped up to see what I've done. Also, Rengar, Rengar uh, teleported bot and they actually played pretty well, <laughs> their bot lane. But we still get the kill on Blitzcrank, so that's fine. And then I position myself here, I try to go and take the Wukong out again. So you can see how I'm going around the map, right? He flashed, I follow, GLP, he's dead. I don't wait, guys, I, I do stuff on the map when I'm ahead, I try to be everywhere. I am having 14 kills advantage and also I am having GLP. <laughs> Look at the item advantage, it's, it's huge. So if you think that, then... It's just, we just have to gather, do, you, you gotta move around the map. So, right, the next thing that I know is that I see this thingy on the map, which is called the blue buff. You can see it by this, right? The nominator on the map, I don't know how to call it. Well, at this point, when Ukon comes, he would either go for rights or go for his bigger buff, which gives more gold, which creates then a path towards wolves, towards rights, and towards red. So, I expect Ukong to come here. So I just move myself towards that bush. I don't know when exactly he'll come, but I, he spotted me on the world, right? Then he uses W right through my E, and I kill him again like I killed him before. Mind the fact that this guy is not a bad player. I played with I played with him a game ago in Kane, and he actually carried the game. He's a good player, but he's actually pretty tilted by the early ganks, by the early facts, and most players wouldn't expect this. Also, we're going straight for a Drake, which ensures that we are tankier. And at this point, Diana, I'm sorry to laugh at this, Diana is already AFK, Seth is already AFK. They give up by that because the difference is 4k and I don't think they believe they actually have a chance. And I don't think, well, I don't think they believe they actually have a chance, but I don't think either I believe they actually have a chance because... All my teammates know what they have to do. We have a scaling Kogmao Lulu on bot lane. We have a Fed Warwick, a Rengar that's about to become extremely strong because he has CS advantage and also level. And 
everything looks bad for them. I don't say this game is not winnable from them by this point because their Grisaia gets fed and she maybe is able to carry them. But I could see why they would get depressed at this point. Because after that, we don't let them do anything. Wukong gets chased around the map. I do a lot of hunting as well with them. I take his camps. Wukong is not doing anything. So we have a lot of free objectives around the map. We get Herald and game is over by this point. We don't really, we don't really do much at this point. I'm just going to speed it up. Basically what we do is uh, take this tower, uh, practically watch Rengar die because he'll going to get soloed by the tower because, because right? <laughs> Wukong even left and we just, we just take the base now. And honestly, I can't believe why they went AFK <laughs> or why Set or Diana went AFK or Wukong went AFK because honestly you could see how tilting this is now is it, I do not I am sure that this is not good behavior I would have tried I would have still tried I like games when I lose this hard because there is the most room to learn right so I would probably never go AFK in, in ways like that just just if someone else's game goes AFK and there are clearly absolutely no chances but being the first one or being the second one even I don't really approve of that but I really believe you could try to win those games even when you are behind now the only thing that's left behind us before us and the Nexus as you can see Diana is trying here still uh, is that we have to actually take the Nexus so we kill the Diana we do a lot more stuff around the map it's, it's kind of beyond the point but the thing is Xaya actually tried and Xaya actually got sort of fed so she maybe had a chance but it's pretty much 2 versus 8 or 1 versus 9 if you think about it and you're against the protect the ADC comp their odds at high elo of winning are below 0 and 1 percent I'll be honest so we come back we we wait I'll tell my team right here that I'm going to reach either Blitzcrank or Zayak to end the game and this is exactly what I'll do sorry I'll wait here I wait for Blitzcrank to miss position I do the GLP full combo and him and the game is pretty much over because well Warwick will smite him right all right so Diana died into the tower somewhere I don't know where she went and we end the game right here but this is the story of how you can win when and how you can snowball further when you get some early advantage there will be games there will be lots of games also look at her look at her she's as i said she's 7-1 there will be games lots of games where early on you might get advantage not necessarily 3-0 and not necessarily by an invade it could be from a gang from your jungler it could be that you are very good and you kill the enemy mid laner and when you get this kind of advantage, you can try to extrapolate it towards other stuff, towards killing the enemy jungler, towards ganking a lot of bot, towards keeping farm advantage over the opponent mid laner, or towards doing other stuff on the map like objectives and first towers and helping either some other champion in your team that's very good at scaling. So if you have something that very well scales, you can try to gank his lane to get his early advantage and to win the game from that point. So. These are the things that you gotta do to carry from mid lane. These are the things that I generally try to do. You can see how I actually went towards their enemy jungler every single time. And I was not afraid to know that I already have advantage and to use this advantage to actually further kill the opponent's jungler. And this was done starting at level 1 here. I moved away from the wave after I pushed it. I moved right here towards this bush because I had a feeling that he would do this camp or this camp even if he would have gone directly here then uh, we would have catch him with Warwick but he might have flashed and escaped and the game would have been a different story but I tried to predict it I tried to went for it and it actually gave uh, a lot of room towards us to win the game risks and rewards guys risks and rewards you try to do these things and if you practice these risks long enough, if you do it and smart, you're going to get advantage. You're going to learn over time and you're going to be better with it. I'm Drumat and I really hope you enjoyed this quick Tulia tutorial. I'm around ATLP in Grandmaster right now. I have some pretty good games. I'm against some pretty good challengers in other games, so I have to, I still struggle till I learn how to properly play against these players, but I'm honest with you, I've never been at that level, so I have to learn as well. And I really hope we can see more quality 
clear gameplay like this, even though it might be along the fact that Blitzcrank trolled a bit early on, and also Wukong got tilted, and set went AFK and Diana and stuff like that, but still, this happens in League of Legends a lot, and you got the profit of it in ranks when you can, because it's your LP, your time, and you want to climb, and we all want to climb, and let's do this, guys, let's be the best Tilia mains we can be, and see you next time, goodbye, guys.